This sizzling crispy dish, made up of leftover pig parts, is one of the Philippines' most beloved dishes. It's called sisig. Okay, let's do it. All right. My name is Meda, and we're heading out to Maharlika in the East Village to learn a bit more about Filipino cuisine. Today, we're going to try out what Anthony Bourdain claims to be the gateway of Filipino food. In the Philippines, whenever we hear that sizzling plate of sisig coming to the table, everybody's faces light up. That's Raf Ignacio, the host of New York City's Filipino food crawl. Hey Raf, how hey, are you Meda. doing? He was kind enough to join me at Maharlika, where I'm going to try sisig for the first time. If we trace back to the origin of sisig, we'd be surprised to know it's probably even vegan and didn't have anything to do with pork. In its original form, sisig was actually a salad made up of various vegetables and fruits that were tossed together with a vinegar paste, and it was made to be very sour. It included souring fruits uh, like mango or pineapple in the most sour version. There are many theories as to how and why sisig came to be. But the most popular notion was that under the U.S. occupation of the Philippines in the late 1800s, American naval forces would throw out leftover pig parts, and the Filipinos would save the discarded heads and eventually made a dish out of it. Filipinos were very resourceful and were not wasteful. So the idea of throwing away pig heads just seemed completely, probably absurd to um, my ancestors or the cucineros of yesteryears. Up until the late 1960s, the pig parts in sisig were simply boiled and soaked in vinegar. Then came Aling Lusing, a Filipino barbecue owner from Pampanga. Lusing invented the modern sisig, a thrice-cooked dish that is boiled, grilled, and fried. The best version I've ever had is at Aling Lusing in Pampanga, and we try to mimic that version. Some restaurants serve it with chicken, some serve it with tofu, some serve it with squid. But what remains the same is the style of cooking. So you boil it, you grill it, and then you fry it. Now you can get sisig anywhere, even in canned form. To see just how Maharlika makes the signature Filipino dish, I'm meeting up with Roth, who has a wealth of knowledge about the cuisine in the Filipino staple. Filipinos tend to be very like, private with their, with their cooking because these recipes remain at home. Each recipe is also very um, specialized and there's no one way to cook adobo or there's no one way to cook sisig and I think that's what makes Filipino cuisine very exciting. So today we're going to try sisig. It's one of my favorite dishes. I grew up eating it and I'm so excited for you to try it out. I'm super excited. Let's go see how it's made. Let's do it! So sisig begins with your pig head. You have your pig ears, your snout, your cheek, and belly. And you want to boil that. You want to do a slow boil over a long period of time. After you boil it, you're going to put it on the grill. And then you're going to get a char mark, you're going to get some color, and then you're going to infuse that with that smokiness that only a grill can do. Once cooled down, the pig parts are sliced and diced and placed into a deep fryer. They are sautéed with garlic, onions, vinegar, and chicken liver. I want you guys to taste it in this form. So this already has the liver. This has already been cooked three times. So yeah. So what, and what do you think about the texture? Oh, definitely lots of cartilage. Yeah. You could taste some chewiness. Yeah. There's chewiness in it. Yeah. So it's actually really fun to eat, especially with beer. Mm -hmm. Sisig is a beer drinker's food. <laughs> The dish is served on a sizzling plate and finished off with one final topping, a freshly cracked egg. So I'm going to eat the fish sisig and you're eating the traditional pork sisig? Pork sisig, yes. Awesome. Let's go ahead and get started. Try it. When the sizzling plate comes, you get your spoon and mash the egg and make sure to mix everything together. Yeah? Uh, and yeah, let's go. Okay, let's do it. All right. Wow, it smells so good. How is it? It's so good. It's so flavorful. And you can taste like that sourness that Nicole uh -huh. was speaking mm -hmm. of as well. And it's still sizzling hot because it just came out of the pan. So delicious. If you've never had seasick before, I would explain it as it has a tangy taste, like very tangy. 
but it's good and it's like paired well with the spices. What I want people to know is sisig is a great example of the layers of flavors in Filipino food. It's not inherently sweet and it's not inherently spicy, but it is filled with layers of umami. It doesn't matter where you go, the thread that pulls all Filipino food together is sourness. This was my first taste of Filipino cuisine in general, and just after tasting the sisig, I'm so much more interested in just learning more about Filipino food, especially because I'm a lover of garlic rice, I'm a lover of tangy, acidic type of foods, and this literally filled my belly and is so good. For me, it brings me home. And it's a, it's a great dish to share with a friend, uh, it's a great dish to bring people together. <laughs> I just did a seasick body roll. That's really good. <laughs>